So if you're thinking about doing a podcast, I highly suggest you use Anchor. And here's why. Now, first things first, it's free. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I'm talking dollar dollar bills, y'all. Plus, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you to the major platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a bunch of others. So that's one less thing you got to worry about. And they got all the tools you need to record and edit your podcast in one spot. And you can do all that from your phone or your computer. So in my opinion, it's really the easiest way to make a podcast. Now, if that's what you're looking for and you're ready to jump on it, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What up, though? Welcome to Tamara to the Break of Dawn. The show where you'll literally ride my train of thought as I discuss the different types of challenges and struggles that we all can relate to. I'm your host, Tamara Dawn, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, you already know the struggle could be way too real sometimes, so my hope is that these shows will challenge and inspire you as I basically share the areas that I'm trying to grow in. So let's get it. So if you haven't yet, you should probably go back and listen to requested toxic relationships. You might be toxic if, because that's actually part one of this. And then there's going to be, I know for sure, a part three to this next week. But as I said last week, I had asked for topics, uh, suggestions before the podcast launched just to, you know, throw some variety in there within the realm of obviously what I'm most passionate about, but, um, You know, I got the request for toxic relationships and it was kind of like toxic friendships, but then also toxic family members. And I kind of meshed it all together under the umbrella of toxic relationships. However, after I recorded that episode, I really just kind of thought I needed to dig a little bit deeper because this is such a topic that I know I'm going to come back to over and over again, different parts of it, just because my heart is so much for healthy relationships. My heart is so much for my own personal growth um, because I feel like if I'm healthy, then I'm not, that's one less person out here damaging the rest of society because hurt people hurt people. So because of that, I feel like this isn't a topic while I'm here, let's, you know, stay a while, get comfortable let some things really sink in before I just kind of move on to the next thing. And I didn't want to do it like I kind of have done with the why I'm single, where I go away and come back, go away and come back. I want y'all to really, you know, tap into what, you know, what I feel like is super important about this topic or whatever. So, you know, with plus with Easter coming up, that's how this (laughs) today's episode really came about. Because, you know, you're going to be around your family and, you know, family functions. I mean, I was looking through my Snapchat memories. I remember like actually like around Christmas and I'll like save my Snapchat memories to my phone in the story thing or whatever. And I remember I said something about like I was pre-gaming <laughs> before going to a family function and I just thought that was kind of funny that, you know, I felt the need to get my mind in whatever state I felt to go just, you know, be around family or whatever. And the the interesting thing about family is that, yes, family could be difficult. Like, man, <laughs> family could be difficult. I remember at Christmas... Like, I had just kind of had a, had got into it with one of my family members a little bit before Christmas, and then it's like, you're just kind of forced to be around this person or people if it's ever more than one person, and it's just, I don't know. And so, family is hard, because the thing about it is, I didn't choose y'all. 
Like, and don't get me wrong, I love my family, and if I ever have issues with my family, I talk to them about my issues. I'm not one of those, oh, you're my family, so I'm just going to accept whatever. No, because I think that if something is unhealthy, it's unhealthy, and if something offends me, I should tell you, and if I don't tell you, you're probably going to keep doing it, and I'm going to just be mad, and you're going to be oblivious to what I'm upset for. So... The thing, though, is though I didn't choose them and they didn't choose me and we're just kind of born and it's just, oh, you, here we are. Like my friends, I choose my friends. I choose to interact with whoever, but like family, you don't get that choice. You're just born into whatever family you're born into. You have whatever genetic, you know, tendencies or whatever in some cases and so it's just such an interesting thing it can be extremely difficult but like I said I'm not a person who is like oh you're my family so it's okay we're family there have been family members where I've had those conversations that are the hard conversations that resulted in you know what I feel like our relationship isn't healthy and I'm not about to talk to you for a while and didn't, you know, not because I don't love you, but because we just kept kind of like getting into it. And I'm not a person that really likes to argue just, you know, I want to communicate. I want to talk about, you know, have difficult conversations. I want to hear about whatever I'm doing. You hear about whatever you're doing. Like, we could disagree, but if it gets into this thing where we just can't seem to communicate or if it becomes just this tearing each other... Like, if you bring me to the point where I want to go in on you and, like, and I want to hurt your feelings, then I got to fall back because that's not generally how I am as a person. And so that means there's stuff that's been built up that I've kind of just let slide or whatever or whatever reason it brought me to that that's not my first thing is to it's not to uh just go in on people so when you take me there that's I gotta fall back it's not really just about you it's about me because I'm trying to preserve you know we're family or whatever so the thing about it though is and I saw this it's a meme I always use memes because Man, y'all know memes speak to y'all and, you know, I can relate to them. Why? I don't got to recreate the wheel if some stuff is already out there. So I saw this meme that said, um, you're allowed to terminate your toxic relationship with family members. So let's just, if you needed to hear that, you needed to hear that. You are allowed to terminate your toxic relationship with a family members if it's toxic. You are allowed to walk away from people who hurt you, family or not. You don't owe anyone any explanation for taking care of yourself because that's ultimately what it is. And I've had conversations with myself and it's funny because I'll freely talk about my dad, my bio dad. Um, and it's cause he's a stranger to me, but any other, I'm going to just be like family member. But I just remember when I made the decision to <clears throat> like, you know what, I'm just, I'm not putting any effort into this relationship anymore because it was very one-sided. When I made that decision, one of the factors that led me to that is me thinking about the fact that if that had been any other male friend or any other relationship, but we'll just say male or a dude I was talking to or anything that they treated me the way he was, I wouldn't have nothing to do with them. So just because you hold the title of quote unquote dad does not mean you get really like the privilege to mistreat me and I'm gonna just be there because you're my, you know, I'm, I'm your daughter. No, it don't work like that. And so take um comfort or take the challenge if you needed to hear that that it is okay to walk away from toxic family members um because your peace of mind 
it's important. And here's the thing is that if you don't have peace of mind, like, okay, you're with you everywhere you go. You know, some people just sidebar. They'll, it's funny because some, for some people, maybe moving away and switching locations or cities or whatever is, is going to be a good move for you to get yourself together for some people. But there are people that I have known that have moved from city to city, but still have the same issues. And that's because you are with you wherever you go. So if the issues are internal issues that you need to work out, switching locations is not going to change anything for you because you're still with you. And so because you are with you wherever you go and whatever it is that you got to do, you know, be it work school, if you're a business owner, if you're like me personally, you know, I work, I'm a mom. And then I have creative stuff that like this podcast, for example, which (laughs) side note, I don't think y'all realize (laughs) like, and I didn't know this going into this. I, you know, I listened to some podcasts about how to create a podcast before just to kind of learn some of the technical stuff or whatever but like I don't think y'all realize how much effort and it's funny because uh Twitter I follow a lot of podcasters and I like to follow people who are kind of like newer podcasters um just because or not new but kind of you could kind of tell by how many episodes they have or whatever But I like that because it's kind of like we're all in this together, like we're learning together. Um, And one of the things that it's a common thing that, you know, they understand because I've seen it tweeted is that a lot of effort goes into this podcast, like recording. That's just one little thing. Then there's, you know, the description there's promoting it, which you got to be intentional about that. And that's something I'm growing in, like how to draw people in and this, that, and the other, and being consistent with that because you got to stay, you know, in front of people in their mind. And then especially on a place like Twitter, everything moves so fast. So it's like the people who tweeted, like if I tweet in the morning, then people are, might not be the same audience as the people mid afternoon as the people in the evening, middle of the night, if I can't sleep, like it's, you know, you just gotta, and then there's Twitter versus Instagram versus Facebook, sometimes Snapchat and like just how to promote on each platform. And it's just been such an interesting journey. But I, I, I say that because this is something that, is something I have to mentally be okay with doing. I have to be able to mentally, physically, (coughs) excuse me, be okay to go to work, to take care of my kids, you know, run my household. That, That means cooking, cleaning, delegating, whatever that looks like. And so if I'm not at peace, that is going to take away from something somewhere, especially like for me, if I don't have healthy, like a healthy outlet, I'm in my head. And so then my thoughts are just all over the place and it starts to like physically affect me, weigh me down, maybe make me feel depressed or I don't want to then I struggle to get up in the morning and just, it just affects all these things. And if I'm struggling to get up in the morning, then I'm not wanting to go to work or I'm late for work. And then if I'm late for work, I might have to stay late to flex my hours and blah, blah, blah. So it's like this whole thing that could be affected if I'm not at peace, you know, like not being at peace really negatively affects you and it causes stress. And It's interesting because physically, here are some of the things that stress can cause. These are some physical things. I found this article. Headaches. So stress can, hold on, let me make this bigger. 
so I can actually read it. Okay, stress can trigger and intensify tension headaches. And I'm someone who, I get headaches a lot depending on different factors. Um, so headaches are the worst. You know, I get migraines at times too, and it's it's just a mess. Um, but yeah, stress can cause headaches. Depre or excuse me, increased depression. So chronic stress, because I feel like there's a difference between a stressful situation, because like there are things that can, you know, cause stress. Um, hold on, I'm going to. I'm a person who likes to have definitions and stuff like that so like sometimes we just keep saying a word and it's like what does it actually mean um so stress is the physical pressure pull or other for or other force exerted on one thing by another or it's physical, mental, or emotional strain or tension. So stress can happen and it could be situational stress where it's just like, oh my gosh, this is a, you know, I'm stressing over, I don't know, how to pay my bills or I'm stressing over my car broke down and knock on wood that that does not happen by the grace of God because I ain't got money or time for that right now. But um, or, you know, work is stressful, you know, as I've said before, I'm a social worker. So dealing with people, especially if they have like very hard situations that they're going through that I wish I could help more, but I can't, that just, that weighs on me. Um, it like really makes me sad and I try not to take work with me home, but sometimes you do. I have those situations where I'm like emotionally drained because of whatever someone's going through. So that's normal. But then there's the difference between just you're constant at a state of stress. And so that's where that chronic stress comes into play. And that can wear you down emotionally, lead to depression, insomnia, for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure, when I am stressed, I cannot sleep because my mind will not shut down and I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that or maybe I'm crying or whatever. So insomnia, heartburn. Now that was interesting because I just never would have um, thought that would be a thing. But it says stress increases the production of the stomach acid, which or of stomach acid which could lead to heartburn or make it worse. Rapid breathing, so when you're stressed, the muscles that help you breathe tense up, which can leave you short of breath. Risk of heart attack. Um, weakened immune system. So for me, one of the, the key factors for when I know I'm stressed or doing too much or whatever or running myself ragged is when I start getting sick you know, a lot or back to back or whatever. That's when I know, okay, I need to slow down and I need to rest or I need to do something. Um, but long-term stress weakens your immune system's defenses, leaving you more vulnerable to infections. Um, high blood sugar. So stress causes your liver to release extra sugar into your bloodstream, which over time puts you at risk for type 2 diabetes, which that is just crazy. Um, pounding heart, high blood pressure, um, stomach. So stress, hold on. Stress affects your body's digestive system, which can lead to stomach aches, nausea, and other tummy troubles. Fertility problems. So, stress interferes with the reproductive system in both men and women and may make it harder to conceive. I ain't trying to have no more kids at this point in life. And I say at this point, it's so funny because 
sometimes people ask me if I would have more kids because, I mean, my kids are 16, 17, and 20, but I'm only 39, about to be 40 soon, but, and so in theory, (laughs) I'm not too old to have more kids, and, you know, I'm, if I, like, I always think, what I say is, if I was to remarry ever, Because as I've said, you know, that is a desire. So if I was to ever remarry and this person did not have kids, I would be open to it just because I think that's unfair. I mean, they might not want to biologically have kids and then I ain't tripping. We could travel. We could do whatever. But like, um, I'm open to it if, you know, because that's that'd be unfair to say, um, nah, I'm, you know, I'm not having no kids. So I either need to be open to it or not, you know, get with somebody who doesn't have kids, but I'm decided to be open to it. Um, so on that same, you know, kind of, I don't even know what word I want to say, but on that same category, I guess, low sex drive. So stress and the fatigue that comes often with it can take a toll on your libido, erectile dysfunction. So your brain plays an important part in the process of getting an erection. Stress can interfere with this process. Miss periods, um, which then can have you thinking you're pregnant when you're not, or just tense muscles. So those are some of the ways that stress can affect you physically. So that's in addition to not having peace of mind and stuff like that. And so that's why it is so important to have peace of mind and establish boundaries. And I just think some people, I talk about this a lot. Like I even will say to my kids sometimes, you know, if you they do something and I'm like, don't be trying to manipulate me. And they kind of be looking at me like, but I just need them to understand the reality of what they're doing. Like I had a conversation with my daughter one time where she kept doing the same thing over and over. And I kept telling her this was not something that was okay. And she would apologize every time we had this conversation But then she would do it again over and over and over. And so finally I told her, because, you know, my kids are older and you could have these real conversations with them. And, you know, finally I told her, I'm like, you know, you keep apologizing, but then you also keep doing the same thing over and over again. And you know the conversation we've we've had, excuse me. So when you apologize and you're not changing the behavior, and it's like you know you're not going to change the behavior, basically it's like you're just saying, I'm sorry to appease me. And so I was like, you probably shouldn't say I'm sorry until, uh, how did I say it? I said, unless you have like an actual like repentant attitude, which repent is basically just to turn away. And that was a term that, you know, we kind of laughed when I said it because I was trying to drag it out but but the reality is that's what that means and so it's kind of like I just personally feel like and I know I've said this before I'm pretty sure but if not this is going to be the first time you heard it that you know an apology without um change behavior is you know manipulation and I just I don't know I'm just not with that and boundaries Oh my gosh, it's so important to establish boundaries, which basically, what is a boundary? A boundary is something that indicates bounds or limits, a limiting or bounding line. So basically a boundary is saying, you know, putting the line in the sand, this is how far I'm going with whatever the boundary is that you're setting, or this is how far you're going And I am a person, oh my gosh, like when I feel like someone is, you know, crossing a boundary that I'm either trying to set or I've already set, it makes me feel like I could feel that physically and I just feel violated and I feel gross. And, you know, I'm a deep 
feeling person so I feel things very deeply and you know one may feel like that you know oh you're dragging it out it's not that deep but to me it is so who are you to tell me how I'm supposed to feel what I feel and like boundaries and a lot of it is because of things that have happened to me you know in my childhood or whatever so it's like boundaries are super important to me because there were a time when I didn't even know what a boundary was and the boundary was crossed and I didn't have any say so in that so I'm pretty sure you you know kind of gathering what I'm saying or whatever so because of that situation where my boundaries weren't respected it's just made me that now that I understand with what boundaries are, it's just, I feel like one, it's important for me to establish them so that you know what your limits are. But then when I establish them, you need to respect it. And if you don't respect it, I'm probably not going to deal with you. I may have a conversation with you depending on what relationship we have, just so, you know, because maybe you didn't understand you know, what I had said or what I had needed or what I had desired or whatever. So maybe you didn't understand that. And there's grace for that to have a conversation. But when I start noticing repeated patterns, I'm just going to stop talking and I'm just going to fall back because I don't, why well, I got to repeat myself um, about something that if you love and care about me or whatever, you shouldn't want to especially if I go as far as to explain why, whatever the boundary is, you, you should want to respect that boundary. You should want to have that just like you would want me to respect whatever boundary, you know, you set. So then when you don't do that, I just feel like it's my duty to just kind of fall back. And here's the reason why, because I'm probably going to snap on you and I'm probably going to say some stuff that's going to hurt your feelings. And I, would rather not do that. I would rather just, you know, us be able to maybe some high and buy type stuff. And I remember, and it's funny when things like memories pop up and it was, you know, around the same time that, um, there was somebody. So we'll go with a, a lighter one. Somebody was, DMing me on Instagram and this is not the same story that I shared in Take That L. Um, this is a different one because this was after that because you know that episode was before so this is something different where um, but what I did say is that whenever people DM me it's never like anyone who ever I guess calls themselves trying to talk to me or get to know me it's never like I'm not a person who really likes forced interactions. Like, I'm a person that likes deep, meaningful interactions. Um, I am a people person. I like to have, you know, conversations. I like that about social media where you can hop on a Twitter thread, um, especially if you have a common interest or whatever, or like power. I love power fans because we just have all kinds of conversations on both Twitter and Instagram is the main places. I don't even really know where they're at on Facebook that are people that I don't know, you know? And so I am not someone who's unapproachable. Um, and I try to be nice to people, especially because, you know, as I have this podcast, people want to interact with people and that's fine, but I don't know. I just always, there's always the same vibe I get when it's the same old bull. And I try to just approach everyone differently though, because it's like, I don't, I'm not someone who, oh, I knew it. And I had to be right, even though I get that same feeling every time. And so I remember telling someone, cause you know, people will ask me where I live and I don't know if I watch too many crime shows or whatever, but I just, I don't know. I don't, I just feel like I have kids and it's, I don't know. Y'all don't like, if I don't really know you and I don't even know why you're asking me all these questions that you're asking, why do I need to just give up all this information? And so, you know, when people ask a bunch of questions, then I get to ask, I might answer some general 
you know, public information like, oh, do you have kids? Yep. You know, oh, are you married? Huh. Why are you asking me that? But I'll answer. And then when you get to, you know, then it's like, okay, whoa, what's up with all these questions? If it's just like back to back, no kind of natural progression or whatever, like there's a way that you could like be smooth about it or something. I don't know. Don't make me feel like I'm being interrogated because then I'm going to start asking why. And so I remember I said something about this person being a stranger. Never did I say that they weren't a human or whatever and that person just kind of took it a different way than what I I meant it and I, I don't know it, I just kind of got irritated after that because then I just felt like the conversation like I had said I struggle with small talk with strangers you know when it's just a bunch of uh, questions or whatever so I was kind of trying to tell you like hey I'm not really comfortable with this. I struggle with this because I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the point? Like, what are you trying to get at? Like, me and my little brother were talking about this, I remember, um, at Christmas. Uh, it was actually Christmas Eve because when he, him and his uh, girlfriend had me and my kids over, and we were, I was telling him how when um, strangers DM me... <sighs> And if it's like you, I want to get to know you, I would rather you be like, hey, I saw your profile or whatever drew you to me or whatever. And I want to get to know you, da, da, da. At least I know what your intentions are. So then I understand, okay, so this is why, whatever. Like, just the way I am, even if we was together, I would still question are you sure this is what you want? Just because that's just how I am as a person. It has nothing to really do with, well, well, I don't know. I am a person that needs reassurance, um, for whatever reason. And I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that because you should want to, uh, reassure your partner and let them know you want to be with them or whatever. At least that's what I think. And that's what I would need. But if somebody's coming at me, I would rather than be just straight up like, you know what? I think you're whatever, um, and I want to get to know you and blah, blah, blah. I could respect that, and we could go with that. But when you come just, I don't know, however these people come, and it's just the same way every time where you go from, and it's all within, like, a day. And that's why I'm just like, bruh, ain't no way that and we don't even be talking about nothing so ain't no way that from this small talk and you don't know me and you just oh man i want to be i want to um i want to marry you like what that don't even make sense based on what and not even i don't know you you don't know me i could be a whole scammer like we live in a day and age where people just be trying to get you for your money get you for your you know, steal your identity, whatever, you're not being wise. <laughs> and if you're not being wise, why would I want to be with someone who's not being wise? Like, you should um, cherish yourself enough to, like, want more for yourself. And if that's not what you want for yourself, you might not be in a position to where you should be trying to jump in relationships. And so... um you know, boundaries are important. So that happened and it's irritating when I try to establish a boundary and you try to make me feel like I'm wrong because the person got upset and whatever. And I'm just like, mm, didn't say that, you know, but okay. You know, I just kept, okay, okay, whatever. Okay, bye, you know. Then I had a situation where there's somebody who, again, this is somebody I know in real life, um, who, because I knew them in real life, it went a little bit different because when they messaged me, you're somebody I know. And so, you know, I could do small talk better with people I know because I know you. And so we're having small talk, but it went from small talk to, I want to date you. And I, I don't remember, and I, why? Like, I don't care if I like you. I could be in love with you. And if you 
are the man of my dreams and you come to me and you're like, I want to be with you. You need to tell me why, because relationships are not something to play with. That's why I've stayed single because I've had to really figure out like, is that really what I want? And then it blah, blah, you know, this whole thing and not necessarily with anyone, just like a relationship in general, especially now that I've been single for, what is this? 2020 going on 13 years. Like now that we're here, it's like, Oh, do I want to give up? Just not having to worry about, you know, anybody else in, in that way. So you could be the man of my dreams and I would still say why. And you need to be able to tell me why. So if the man of my dreams is out there listening, I hope you listen to this podcast and you understand how I am. Yes, I'm trying to grow whoop de woo, but asking questions, that's how I'm going to be. I'm going to ask you why. And you need to tell me why. And it needs to be solid reasons why you would want to be in a relationship with me. And when people give me reasons that are that like don't make sense or they're they're superficial then I'm asked more questions and then when you get defensive I'm gonna explain why I'm asking the questions and then what happened with this person is then it went from you know well it's fine we could just be friends I'm like all right cool but then you keep trying to press the issue and I don't like to be pressure to do things that I've already told you I don't really want to do I just wasn't comfortable with the way the conversation went then I just see this person in real life and they just you know trying to press the issue and I'm like no and and so then I saw this person somewhere and I remember one time I saw them before and they tried to give me a hug and I was like no thank you literally no lie said no thank you and they were like okay saw them again and they tried to give me a hug and when I tried to um kind of like I didn't even get the words out I tried to like put my arms up what they said was I know you remember me so it shouldn't be weird and that threw me off and they said that as they were hugging me so I went along with the hug because we were in a public place where I didn't want to make this drug out scene but I just felt so violated after that. Um, and I'm not saying it's drug out like, oh, they raped me. No, I mean, my daughters were there when this happened. So it wasn't like that. But it's just like when I'm trying to establish a boundary or I've already established one and you don't respect it, it just, like I said, it really makes me feel some type of way. And so... If you don't establish boundaries, you know, I remember being in college and reading this book. Um, I don't even remember what it was called, but my degrees in psychology. So that's a lot of the, you know, that's what kind of got me into um, being passionate about just behavior patterns of people and um, relationship dynamics. That's one of my favorite parts. Plus, uh, the actual physical studying of like the brain and the neurotransmitters and all that stuff. Um, that's the stuff that's like the most exciting to me versus, you know, mood disorders and mental disorders. That's interesting, you know, good information to have, but I'm not saying like I'm the most passionate about that. Um, and so I remember reading this book where it was talking about, a day in the life of a woman who had no boundaries and it was just crazy everything that everyone did to her and it wasn't even anything like sexual or it wasn't even like that but it's just like the way people treated her because she did not establish boundaries people were rude I mean we'll say like at work she had to go home to her kids if I remember correctly and her boss didn't do something and try to put it off on her so that her boss could go out or something like that. And she didn't establish the boundary and it wasn't a situation where she really had to do it. She just didn't establish the boundary. So she ended up staying late at work and then, you know, she got home and her husband 
did something and it was just I can't even remember that part but the work piece should give you an idea of like a boundary is like no you know this is your responsibility I have to you know go home to my kids I feel like it was like somebody's birthday or something I don't know but that's not hard in a work situation you know unless your boss is a dictating manipulative tyrant you should be able to establish boundaries to where if your boss asks you to do something and I'm not saying don't like be a team player and don't be whatever I'm not saying that you know what your boundaries are you know what that looks like in your world um, but I'm saying you, you should have boundaries and when you don't have them, like anything can happen and you just kind of are pulled to and fro and you don't have any control. And, you know, it kind of makes sense when you think about a, what a boundary is. It's a limiting or boundary, bounding, what did I say? Hold on. <laughs> a limiting or bounding line. So it's like, we not going past here. And when you don't have a, we not going past here point like if the dog that you own just go here with me if you own a dog and you don't have a fence and you don't have a a leash and the thing the stake or whatever that goes in the ground if you don't a chain whatever if you don't have anything to keep that dog in check and you haven't trained that dog because <laughs> one of my one of my friends was telling me about how trained his dog is and it's just amazing, but he's trained his dog to be that way. So if you haven't done these things and you don't have a fence, your dog is just going to run away, basically, and may never come back. And so boundaries are important. So here's my encouragement to you, and here's some tips for cutting ties with a toxic family member. Because um, I found an article, because it is... It is, it is important for your peace of mind to cut ties with a toxic family member. And you can, let's circle back to what I talk about, you can be the bigger person and um, for the sake of holiday events and stuff like that, sometimes you got to weigh if it's even worth it to make a big deal out of it and like not show up or whatever. So like me in particular... When I had that situation, I decided to just be the bigger person and let it go. Because in this situation, um, we had we had talked about it in the midst of when we got into it. But I just, I think I was just more so mad that it even happened. Because the way it happened was, I didn't do anything to cause the reaction and the response that I got from this person. And then when I was trying to like de-escalate the situation, they just kept turning up. And so because of, and then it made me uncomfortable and I won't get into any more specifics about whatever, but it's like, because it made me uncomfortable in the setting that I was in, it made me mad, you know? And then when I just kept thinking like, what, how did we even get here? But... Because I had said, you know, and I wasn't 100% right in it because then, you know, I started saying little petty stuff and doing whatever. And that's not generally how I am. And so it just whatever. But I decided to just let it go. And it, and it was fine. But had that have been a pattern? And that's more so what I'm talking about. That wasn't a pattern with this person. But when it got into patterns with another family member where I, you know, I just kind of said, Hey, I feel like our relationship, it does, it's just not healthy. And I just think that we need to take a break. And we did. And I'm glad we did because I feel like we have a better relationship now as a result of that, because I mean, I don't know what that person did, but I know what I did in that relationship or in that time apart. And, you know, sometimes you have to, um, not have unrealistic expectations for people too. I think sometimes, and I think when I do, I think I'm going to do an episode on fake friends because I've been, or actually we'll just kind of talk about it right now, even though this isn't about family, but I always struggle 
with the whole concept of fake friends sometimes because sometimes I'm like, is it that they're really fake or is it that our expectations of them were unrealistic and then we're mad when they didn't meet our unrealistic expectations? Like, did we have them on this platform of potential even like when you think about relationships sometimes where they say you fall in love with their potential did we fall in love or did we get caught up in the case of friends in their potential and lose sight of reality and then were disappointed did we expect them to be somebody they never were and then were just mad like is it really that they're fake and i'm not saying they there aren't fake people out there there are manipulative grimy people that do things because they are a wounded and very broken person generally and you know it just it is what it is I'm not gonna say there aren't pure evil people out there but for the people that I've dealt with it's usually been they're just we're all we all got issues you know um and so are they really fake? I struggle with that. I don't have an answer for that. So I'll probably revisit that topic because it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. And so usually when I think about something a lot, then it becomes an episode because I it's something that's I'm going through. You know, that's pretty much usually even when people request stuff, it's funny because when people request stuff and then I'm like, OK, I might talk about that. Um, it kind of comes up. So, last but not least, let's move on to how to cut ties with a toxic family member. One is acknowledge that it's abusive. You have to stop minimizing and denying the harm that your family member has caused. So if you don't admit it, it's abuse, you're probably not going to stop it from happening. So it's important that you understand what is healthy and unhealthy because sometimes you just don't know especially if you've grown up with that all your life and so sometimes um talking to someone about something if you start feeling some type of way because sometimes if you talk to the family member no you know or if you talk to other family members they might not support you maybe find a safe um unbiased person to just run the situation by um two Give up the fantasy that they will change. So if they're, you've acknowledged the behavior and they're not going to change, stop trying to, oh, they'll change. No, let them change first so y'all can have peace and harmony. Grieve the loss. Oh, number three, grieve the loss of having the kind of relationship you wanted with this person. <sighs> that made me get emotional because I had to do that with my bio dad because I always had... All my life, all, you know, that he wasn't around, I had this idea of what I thought it would be like, and it's it's just not going to be that, and I have had to, I'm still grieving that, like, it's still a process. Um, and then step four, get support from a therapist, support group, or 12-step group, or a friend who's experienced similar issues with their family. So that's kind of, I maybe said that a little too soon, but it's important to have <clears throat> people walking with us um through stuff like throughout my seasons in life I always have somebody that for where I'm going they are the person to walk alongside me and they get it or whatever so whoever those people may be and it's not always somebody that's going to um what's the word I'm looking for it's not always surrounding yourself with people who feel how you feel and think like you think and are just gonna the yes men and the yes women it's not surrounding yourself with people like that sometimes you need to surround yourself with people who will yes acknowledge your feelings and validate them but also challenge you to um grow from the situation or not dwell there or you know whatever that looks like you know you need to have those people around you too. So my challenge is, we'll go there, find those people around you 
But then if there are people that you, um, you know, toxic family members, all this can be applied to toxic friends. But I wanted to go a little deeper into the family part because I feel like some of our greatest, deepest wounds come from those that have the same bloodline as us a lot of times. And so I just think um, it's very important to have healthy relationships oh that's your mom oh that's your dad oh that's your cousin oh so if your mama daddy cousin whoever is toxic you might need to cut them off so just think about that and then act accordingly so yeah so i got for y'all until next time so first things first shout out to sniper t for the outro beat and all his information can be found in the episode notes but i'm not playing when i say i want y'all to interact with me so here's a few ways you can do that and the links to all these methods are in the episode notes as well all right so you can leave me an audio message and make sure you let me know if you want to remain anonymous because you might just end up on a future episode you can email me Hey, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and I'll definitely follow you, excuse me, follow you back. Go ahead and slide in the DMs, it's not on no weird stuff. You can like the Facebook page, and the link on there uh, goes to my email as well. And then what I'll do on Mondays, depending on how much y'all interact with your girls, I'll do a response episode, add a little razzle-dazzle of other stuff I think y'all might like. So, audio message, email, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, just whatever. Just holla at your girl. 